Andrew here, and I have something amazing to share with all of you. I just achieved the highest score ever reached by anyone in Nintendo World Championships 1990. Or so I would say if my name was Billy Mitchell, but actually I had a little bit of help from our friend, the Game Action Replay, which if you watched one of my recent videos, you would know all about this interesting device and its two main features. Uh, I do recommend definitely checking out that video before watching this one, but for those who may not have seen it, the two features that it allows you to add to absolutely any NES game from the looks of it are save states and the ability to slow down the game to anything from one half to even one-fifth of the normal speed. Now combining those two features together really allows you to break the Nintendo World Championships. Uh, and it's so interesting because I was really sure when I plugged it in that it would not be compatible with it just because of like how weird and different of a game the Nintendo World Championships actually is. But with this device, it does allow you to really mess with things and get scores that would otherwise not be possible. Obviously, I do not in any way, you know, condone this as a real score. I'm not bragging about it in any sense. It was kind of cool, you know, to pretend at least for a few seconds that I did have the world record. But what I thought would be fun to do with this is go where no one has ever gone before the Nintendo World Championships and check out what happens if you exceed a score that was obviously never meant to exceed be exceeded. What happens if we go over 10 million points in either, you know, maybe just Tetris or even in total? I thought it would be fun to have a look into that and also maybe a little bit of the journey that I had in discovering just how to mess with the Nintendo World Championships with the game Action, Re uh, Action Replay. Again, I definitely recommend checking out my video specifically about the game Action Replay to kind of get some more details exactly just how powerful of a device it is in regards to, you know, messing with your NES games. But for those who are already up to date on all that good stuff, here is my adventure in breaking this legendary game. So I showed in my previous video that the Game Action Replay worked not only with officially licensed NES games, but also with Famicom games, played with the Famicom to NES adapter, and even multi-carts and unofficial games such as Action 52. Naturally, I was also curious whether or not the Game Action Replay would work with the Nintendo World Championships 1990, and I was definitely leaning on the side of no, I did not think that it would be compatible. But when I tried the save state function in Super Mario Bros, I was very surprised to see that it actually worked correctly. As a result of this, I was very curious how the save states were affecting the timer that exists in the Nintendo World Championships 1990. On the front of the cartridge, you can move switches to determine just how long the contest lasts for, and throughout this test, mine were always set to the official 6 minutes and 21 seconds that the official tournament lasted for. It wouldn't be until a little bit later though that it became clear just how save states were messing with the time. Afterwards, I went through Rad Racer and eventually ended up at Tetris, where I found that save states also worked. Otherwise, I just messed around a little bit, played until the time ran out, and I was given a score, and everything looked quite normal, but it was what I did after this that made all of the difference. So I made a save state in Tetris as I stated, I then reset the game after being stuck at the end screen, but when brought back to the main title screen of the Nintendo World Championships, rather than pressing select on the second player's controller as one would normally do to start the contest, I loaded my state using the first player's controller and that brought me right back to the last save state that I had made in Tetris. At this point I was expecting one of two things to happen, either the save state that was loaded would remember how much time was remaining when the save state was made, or since the game was never properly started with the select button on the second player's controller, I thought maybe the time would just have never been initiated and I would be stuck in Tetris forever without any kind of end thus meaning that I would never actually get a final score, totaling up my results in all three games. Amazingly though, neither of these things are what actually happened. I fooled around a little bit in Tetris and didn't take things too seriously, since I figured that if either of those two results were what was going to happen, and I was actually quite sure that one of those two things would be the case, there would have been absolutely no reason to make this video. But instead, something incredible and completely unexpected took place. After sitting on the Tetris failure screen for several minutes, the final result screen actually appeared. And how long did it take for that to happen, you might ask? Upon further experimentation, I discovered that from the moment I loaded my save state into Tetris from the title screen, it would take exactly 6 minutes and 21 seconds before the result screen was shown. 
This means that by creating a save state in Tetris, returning to the title screen, and then loading that save state, one can give themselves infinite time to play the Nintendo World Championships. Now add in the slow motion function, which will allow you to continue playing Tetris in the higher levels, as if the speed was that of one of the lower levels, and you could technically go on forever if you wanted to. So I kept playing until I finally decided I wanted to end the game and see what kind of score I had, and what I saw was actually pretty cool. My total score was listed as 2,978,220, which wasn't much higher than Thor Ackerland's 2,809,995 that he won the Nintendo World Championships with. It definitely seemed rather low considering the amount of work and time that I had put into achieving it. What I noticed though was that perhaps I did actually deserve a little bit more, and just the 10 millionth digit of the total score was cut off. But then upon further inspection, what I actually noticed was that the 10 millionth digit of my score in Tetris was cut, thus not adding to a correct total score. This is really neat because it shows that Nintendo accounted for the fact that someone may actually get such a high score through, you know, probably not legitimate means, but by any means, should that happen, the game actually accounts for it in a pretty interesting way just by cutting off that number rather than creating some kind of, you know, horrendous overflow glitch. What this meant though was that I did not actually score over 10 million points because the numbers after being added together, as incorrect as the Tetris score was, did not add to over 10 million points. What I wanted to do then was carefully calculate everything together while playing the game to create numbers that would add to a total score of 10 million. So what this meant that I had to do was start all the way back from the beginning. So I scored 10,400 in Super Mario Brothers, and by the end of Rad Racer, I had 73,600 points. What I then needed to do was get a score in Tetris that when added to this equaled over 10 million, yet I could not score over 10 million points within Tetris itself. This meant that within Tetris I had to score between 9,926,400 points and 9,999,999 points. And since the score that you receive in Tetris is multiplied by 25 to get your Tetris Nintendo World Championship score, this meant that I had to score between 397,056 and 399,999 points within the actual Tetris game itself in order to achieve this. So after putting in all the work, calculating everything just perfectly, and then finishing the game with the required score, the result that I was shown was that unfortunately, even if the Tetris score itself does not go over 10 million, resulting in that 10 million digit being chopped off, even the total score accounts for this and does not glitch out in any way, or even, you know, maybe insert a one before that score, despite the fact that there was no zero placeholder for it. That would have been so cool if that had happened, but throughout these tests, we have proven that if you go over 10 million points in even you know, one of the specific games, or 10 million points overall, both results are the same and your scores are displayed incorrectly, and you can never actually score over 9,999,999 points in the Nintendo World Championships. Or if you want to get really technical, 9,999,995 because there is no possible way to get an ending score that is not a multiple of 5. And there you have it, that is what happens if you take the score of the Nintendo World Championships 1990 where it was never meant to be taken. It's actually kind of cool that the game handles it very well, it doesn't overflow or lead to any kind of glitchiness, they just chop off that 10 millionth digit and it doesn't calculate correctly unfortunately but otherwise it works fairly well, there's nothing really game breaking about it. It's kind of cool though because having a final score of just about you know 11,000 while playing all three games is something that's not normally possible because you're going to get at least 10,000 in Mario, you're going to get about 60,000 in Rad Racer, so normally 
having a final score after reaching Tetris of only 11,000 is something you would never be able to do. So this is just a video of all sorts of firsts. Unfortunately, none of this is something you can pull off, of course, without the game action replay, but I just thought it would be fun to show it off anyway because, you know, it's really neat to look at, you know, in vi into video games and do those things that you're never normally supposed to be able to do. So I hope that you enjoyed watching this. Thank you so much if you stuck around until the end, and I hope you'll join me next time when I talk about something different. So thanks, and see you later.